I think it's very, very likely that, that there was some kind of uh, demonic possession going on here. I almost felt like there was a cloud of darkness around me. For years, Jessica Galbraith was known worldwide as a fantasy artist. Her specialties were vampires, winged fairies, and haunting gothic goddesses. I would try to give them a look like, you know, they were, they were gazing at you with uh, bad intent. They had um, power and secret knowledge that all is wrapped up with the occult. It was a power that Jessica discovered when she was a child. I think I always had a strong sense that there was a supernatural world. So it kind of progressed from liking the pretty unicorns to um, buying a tarot deck and bringing it home and, and um, doing readings for my friends and uh, getting a Ouija board and we would ask for someone to come talk to us, inviting anyone, any whoever's out there, come talk to us. Things would happen all the time, um, unexplainable things, terrifying things. She saw radios scream on out of nowhere, as well as flying picture frames, broken glass, and complete power outages. The spirits that you think might be ghosts, they're not, they're demons. We were inviting them in, so they thought, Let's mess with these girls. You know, let's terrify him. Jessica stopped using Ouija boards in high school, but kept seeking the supernatural. I was looking for knowledge and power and secrets that I thought maybe other people didn't know. I would say that people thought I was a witch. More than anything, Jessica was curious about death. I would read any kind of book I could get my hands on in the new age about near-death experience or the paranormal. My greatest fear was that um, there was either nothing after death and you're just, you know, annihilated or worse, that there was a hell and that I was going there. Jessica majored in art in college and began creating images that reflected her obsession with death. She married Josh and they had two kids. I was very empty inside. Uh, Josh and I both were um, really financially driven and we would set these goals for ourselves and once we would reach them, we would be dissatisfied again. As her artwork got darker, she began noticing that her daughter Julia was having abnormal fears. The images from Jessica's paintings were becoming real to Julia. I was afraid of my parents or I dying. I used to have nightmares about this troll guy giving me poison and then driving me away in this brown jeep. Jessica and Josh took Julia to a therapist, but the fear and the nightmares continued. Not long after this, the couple sent their son Joe to a preschool that happened to be Christian. The father of one of Joe's classmates befriended Josh and began questioning the couple about their beliefs. Jessica's mother and stepfather were Christians and Jessica had already decided that she didn't want anything to do with Jesus. I felt that uh, perhaps God was just a set of rules, a judgmental, scary, uh, authoritarian figure, but I, I felt like he was removed and we were just kind of off on our own here and there was no, there was no Satan. There was no, you know, it was just all our imagination. I was very prideful uh, at this point and I didn't need to be saved from anything. I had fallen for that deception that it was trying to hold women down. It was a male-dominated religion. And he was able to show me in the Bible how that's not the case at all. As Jessica and Josh read the Bible, everything they had believed and not believed changed. I read the Gospel of John first, and I remember looking at Josh saying, wow, I think this, this is it. This is the truth. And my heart softened and I believed that Jesus was who he said he was, he was God. And the Bible is the word of God. And I just remember him, Dan looking at us and say, he just said point blank, well, have you guys accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And we both blurted out yes, and we meant it. I remember Dan saying, well, then your eternity is settled. Isn't that something? When Jessica got home, she had to face the reality of the evil characters she'd created and introduced to others. All these dark images, I'm watching them come out of the printer and I'm thinking about everything, and I, I just felt utter despair. Jessica called her mom. And I just said, Mom, um, I just accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I said, but I don't know what to do. I don't feel like he can forgive me. And she said, for your art? I said, yeah. And um, she said, because it's kind of satanic. And I, it, it just really hit me, like, yes, it's the truth. And just something told me, go open the shade. 
It wasn't a voice that I heard, it was just in my heart. And I crawled over, tears coming down. And I lifted the shade and there was a huge rainbow just straight up over the field. And I just felt like God walked right in that room with me and said, I forgive you, it's okay. I haven't looked back since. Jessica and Josh literally dumped all of the dark artwork they had in their house. Jessica removed herself from everything to do with the occult. The couple started going to church and studying the Bible. If you come to him, he will give you rest, and that's what I've experienced. So I just feel like a, a big weight was lifted off of our lives. Jessica is no longer afraid of death, and neither is Julia. I'm not afraid because that Jesus is with me and he protects me. Today, the message in Jessica Galbraith's artwork is hope and life. It has nothing to do with death and darkness and everything to do with the light of Christ. All of it to me is a miracle that uh, someone like me could find their faith, find him. It's like a veil lifts when you see it and all, all the power or you know, intrigue that you thought was with the occult is nothing compared to, to the light of God and his supernatural power. And I want everyone to know that God forgives anything and his grace is big enough for all of us. And all you have to do is ask.